Hi everybody, Matthew Turnage here. Well, it's uh, it's been a while since I've done a video showing the additions to my collection. Uh, so I thought I might uh, show a few of the things I've gotten in the last few months. Uh, there's several things that I've gotten that have made their ways into uh, one video or another uh, in some way. Uh, for example, on a recent trip, I finally picked up some uh, first pressings of Wildlife and Back to the Egg, and I was showing those albums when I was talking about Wings. So there's going to be some stuff that I've gotten recently that um, I'm not going to bother repeating in this video. But let's show you a few other things that might be of interest. Um, and I'll start out, I usually don't show uh, CDs, although I'm, I'm buying CDs all the time. Uh, but there are a few here, recent editions, that I thought might be worth a mention. Um, first up, this was from a couple months ago, but this is a little box set. Asia, the reunion albums, and this has all three of their reunion studio albums plus the live album, um, and and it's uh, packaged in a little case that the box opens up like this, and you have a little booklet, and uh, and each of the albums are in like little mini LP sleeves. So here's Fantasia, the live album, there. Um, Asia uh, is a band I was never a huge, huge fan of. There's Phoenix, uh, Omega, and then uh, 30, the, uh, the last album with the original lineup. But I do like Asia, um, especially the first two albums, and I never really went past the third album with them uh, until this set came out, and I thought this would be a nice way to get the rest of the original lineup. Uh, I'm a big Yes fan, and so uh, I am interested in Asia, you know, through that connection. Like I said, I really like the first two albums a lot. Enjoyed all the ones in this set, too, although they don't quite measure up to the uh, originals. Um, here's another. This one, this one came out last year, but I just picked up this CD here recently. This is a uh, Rolling Stone Steel Wheels Live, uh, two CDs and a DVD in this set. Um, and uh, I got this, uh, of course, with the recent passing of Charlie Watts. I was in the mood to listen to some more Stones, and um, uh, I remembered this one coming out and thinking this would probably be an interesting set. I just didn't get around to picking it up at the time. So picked it up. It is a really good concert and, and certainly worth a listen if you like that period of the Stones. And then also I um, did a recent video talking about starting to dive into the Beach Boys uh, catalog a little bit deeper. So I decided to pick this up. This is the Phil Flows. This is just the two CD version. I figured I wasn't quite ready to take a deep enough dive to get the full box set at this point, especially with all the other new releases I'm planning on getting coming up. So I just got this two CD set, um, because this does cover both the Sunflower and Surf Sub, has the original albums remastered. So it's my first time to get those two albums, and uh, I've really enjoyed it so far. I haven't uh, gotten through multiple listens yet. Uh, um, I've only listened to this two once so far, but, uh, but the Sunflower album I'm really enjoying. I like Surf Sub also, but Sunflower seems to be clicking with me a little bit more straight off. All right, now here's some vinyl uh, to show. Um, now uh, we'll continue on with the Beach Boys and show some Beach Boys records that I've gotten. Here's a uh, first pressing uh, of, uh, of Surfer Girl, the stereo version of the album. And I, I, as I said in my other video, I do really enjoy the um, the early Beach Boys a lot. I'm just really now starting to kind of listen to a bit more of their post-pet sound stuff. As you can see the old uh, Capital Rainbow Squirrel label on this. Um, so I was familiar with several of the songs on this album before I bought it, but uh, but it is a great, a great listen. Uh, I believe Brian has said that Surfer Girl is one of his favorite songs he ever wrote, and it certainly is a great one. And then also, as I, again, trying to uh, get myself into some of their later stuff, this was an album rec recommended 
to me uh, in my other video, um, Holland. And this one I've really enjoyed too. Um, maybe even more than the other two, the Sunflower and uh, Surf's Up albums. I don't know if this one, Sunflower, I really like a lot. This is a really interesting album here on the uh, Brother Records and uh, Reprise labels there. Um, yeah, this was a really good album in the, the California Saga trilogy, I guess you could call it, is really, really interesting. That's probably my favorite on the album. And of course, you also get this nice little bonus uh, EP here with uh, Mount Vernon and Far Away, which is really kind of strange but cool piece from Brian. All right, now let's get into some Beatles and Beatles related stuff. First up, uh, Matthew Street loves these things. I decided I'd give it a try. Uh, the Beatles songbook uh, with the Holly Ridge strings. Um, yeah, it is, uh, it is uh, kind of fun to listen to. My office in the lobby has uh, music playing all throughout the day. And sometime in the afternoon, it'll play uh, Beatles and solo Beatles music versions. Uh, you know, a lot of Beatles stuff. Um, solo Beatles, I know I've heard stuff like junk and uh, uh, just like starting over, that sort of thing. But uh, as far as the Beatles tunes, I, I think I like these Holly Ridge strings arrangements better than the, the music versions I hear in my office. All right, some solo Beatles. Um, here's some uh, John Lennon. I finally decided to get around and get a good first pressing of Plastic Ono Band. I was pretty happy with uh, this one when I found it. It's the uh, White Apple used on uh, used by John on this record. I'm glad to get that. Another solo Beatles ought to be interesting to show. This is one that I'd seen at my record store for months, and I finally decided to pull the trigger and, and get, and that's uh, that's Off the Ground, Paul's album from 93, sort of in the period where didn't see vinyl as often. Nice gatefold there. So these uh, albums from this era, the vinyl, are not, or at least certainly in my neck of the woods, are not as, uh, you don't come across them as often, but uh, it's really nice to have. There, and then um, a few Beatles albums to show. Um, from the uh, period in the 70s when Capitol was putting out all sorts of stuff. I think I finally got an original copy of the Beatles at the Hollywood Bowl. Of course, I've had the, uh, the 2016 version for some time now. But I do like the, uh, the artwork on the, the cover and the labels with the uh, the ticket stubs, I think is a nice touch. And uh, of course the uh, the inner sleeve uh, photos of the screaming fans. It's always fun to see. Um, and then another one from that same period. Uh, well, this is from 1980, I think. Uh, Beatles rarities, of course, um, this record is 
best known for is in the gatefold, giving us the cover artwork for the butcher cover, which was in 1980, was pretty rarely seen. We didn't have the internet and reissues and things like that. And this one's on the, uh, the retro rainbow label of that period. And then a couple of uh, Beatles albums to show you. Um, I've, I've been, uh, you know, enjoying collecting uh, the U.S. albums for, uh, here lately for a long time. I never bothered with them, and then you get some, and and now I'm starting to uh, enjoy dipping into uh, uh, different label variations of them. Not necessarily down to uh, the uh, minutia of, you know, if you're looking at first pressings from the '60s, you can you know, whether it's a West Coast pressing or a, a you know, a East Coast pressing, Jacksonville pressing, the labels can be quite different. I'm, I'm not quite going down that rabbit hole yet, but as, as the albums were reissued over the years, sometimes you'd see them in different uh, labels. So here's a copy of the early Beatles. The sleeve was pretty worn, but but the, the record itself was in nice shape. And this one is a 1971 pressing on the Apple label. And I do like these um, these Apple, the look of these Apple label pressings that came out in 71 of the various albums. So I've got uh, one more of those, another Apple label from 71. And this one is, uh, this one is Yesterday and Today. Uh, still in its shrink with its, part of its price sticker has been ripped off so you can't see the price on it. But of course you can tell it's a reissue from this gold record award uh, uh, logo on, on the album. But just to show the, the record itself on the, on the Apple label. All right, so that's uh, that's uh, the vinyl and CDs I had to show you. One other thing uh, that I did pick up this past week, uh, a book that I've just started reading, and that's And in the End, which is The Last Days of the Beatles. This is by Ken McNabb. Um, I'm only uh, a few pages into it so far. I just got it. But uh, I decided to pick it up as I was browsing in the bookstore and uh, saw uh, Alan Cozen from uh, uh, Things We Said Today is uh, one of the uh, quotes on the on the back, and I thought, well, uh, surely it must be worth a read then. So I picked it up and enjoying it so far. Um, it does, uh, just in the early going, it does seem to perpetuate some of the, uh, the, the myths that I'm not sure really hold up today under some of the scrutiny we have. Uh, for example, that uh, the Beatles weren't really interested in, in uh, uh, spending much time on uh, All Things Must Pass. Uh, you know, there's a great uh, uh, video series from uh, Pop Goes the 60s where I think he busts that myth a little bit. But uh, but otherwise, it is a good good read. So if you're looking for a uh, Beatle book to read, uh, that might be a good one to check out. So that's what I've got to show you today. Thanks for watching.